we're really having quite a Bible study. Crazy Bible study. There's yeah. going to be three today? Yeah, three scriptures today. In one day? or In one day. We're talking about prayer because people, there's a lot of Christians don't realize the power of prayer in their lives and they're missing a great benefit. It's one of the most powerful things. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. Uh, Pastor Scott. I'm Pastor Jason. And we got a great show for you today. We're talking about prayer. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you're a new subscriber, type in where you're from. We like to read that on Wednesdays. And go to wakeuptv.tv if you want to get a daily text so we can and we click it. And it just takes you but right But this there. is a Bible study, so watch was, this clip. I was so proud of my son before they put the clip out there. I mean, oh. I was blown away. Oh, yeah. Like he's like a gajillion times better than I was at that age. And uh, He did a fantastic it was job. so good. So watch this clip of my son. Jesus cares about your today. He cares about your today. There's a story in John where um, Jesus is on the cross and he is uh, fulfilling prophecies and he's about to sacrifice himself um, so that your eternity and my eternity are saved. He is re repairing the bridge between humanity and God and he's saving our souls. Wow. But then he goes into, they missed the whole part, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, <laughs> clip, needs, the, the clip needs to keep going. They, they cut off the most important part. Let's then, finish the thought. So he goes, and Jesus goes, hey, will you take care of my mom? And it was such a revelation yeah. to me that, like, normally when we're, I stub my toe, I don't care about anybody. <laughs> I really don't. I don't care about <laughs> anything else. Hungry. Or if I'm hungry. Yeah, if I'm, you know that. Because <laughs> yesterday... <laughs> Yes, so Jason was seven minutes late when he arrived for lunch. I've already done we're, eating. Yeah, we're having we're having lunch together. So. No, we weren't having lunch together. I, we were lunch separate. I got there seven minutes late. It's my bad. Now, granted, he was he texted me. I'm gonna I'm running twenty minutes late. Right. So I was like, oh, I, okay, I'm gonna wait around so before he's, I leave. So he's like, he's I get there seven leave, minutes but... late. I probably five minutes late because I sat down after having ordered. Yeah, you're seven right. Minutes. And so I, I was got done. there five minutes late, and Scott was already eating. Like he already got his food. He was eating. I was like. I just, I go, It drives oh. my wife nuts. It, I just, it literally drives her it nuts. It actually didn't bother me at all. Like, you're hungry, I, cook, I get it. I cook the dinners we're boys. now. We so don't have to eat together. It's I not like her. we have a candle and we're having, like, a special time. I mean, come on. It was Here's just, what this I is do. lunch. I, get the, I cook dinners now. I love to cook, right? So I, I tell everybody, hey, 10 minutes till dinner. I say five minutes till dinner. Then I go, dinner's ready. And then there are nights when no one comes. Yeah. So I sit down and I eat. And then, I hate And that. then everybody comes in and they're like, hey, you, my wife goes, you already ate? I go, yeah, 100%. <laughs> I eat my food when it's warm. I can't help it that you guys had plenty of time to get in here. I gave you three warnings. Gave you three warnings. It I'll, felt like I'm over here just like having fun. Like this is like my favorite thing to do. Like I'm cooking dinner for the family. For the family. And, and I just, want people to show up when it's hot. Right. So anyway, uh, so Jesus is on the cross and he's concerned about his mother. Yeah. He stops being concerned about himself and he shows, yeah. Wow. It's just like uh, uh, Elijah was suffering from the illness in which he would die, and he stops to help the king. Right, and he should have said, hey, I got my own problems. Yeah. I really do have my own issues. And uh, so it's a really cool picture uh, as Christians, but we're talking about the power of prayer. So First Samuel 1 Samuel 1.10. One of the things that, that uh, Lakin said is, is that sometimes we don't pray because we're not sure how to pray. We want to have these articulate, ornate prayers. We hear these prayers on online, or we hear these prayers— you know, at church and people just sound so ornate and so bold and so powerful. And we think, well, I can't do that. And so he, he brought up that sometimes God likes, ugly. you know, it's okay if prayer's ugly. I think that, and I think that's a big one. I think that people sometimes feel like, well, my prayer's not that good. It's not that yeah. pretty. It's not, because sometimes in church, I mean, I know we grew up in, in a church where somebody get up and pray and it was like, it was an old English. Oh, it's beautiful. It was just a beautiful poetry. Father of words. God. Almighty, Thou, the Alpha and Omega, thy beginning and the end. Those are great things to do. I'm, like, I'm not making fun care. of it. But you may be like, well, I can't do that. So right. so bring your ugly old prayer right in front of the no. Lord. Just bring it as it is. And and so Hannah has been trying to have a baby now right. for a long time. And she's she's married, but she's not been able to have a baby. And she's really mad about it. It's been years. Right. And she's really upset. So she goes to the God's house to pray, which is important. And there's the priest Eli watching. Right. And it says this, and she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. This was an ugly prayer. It was a very ugly prayer. She's a bitter, mad, and upset. So bitterness of soul, you get the idea that she might be angry at God. Right. I think she was. Because she feeling like, hey, God, like you're in charge of this part. Like I do my part, but you got to do your part. And right. you're not doing your part. Right. And sometimes I think that we can we can feel like, hey, God, when are you going to move in my life? 
Right. And there's a bitterness that can form. You don't want it there. Right. Why did this happen, God? Where are you at? What's going on? But it's a, So it's an ugly prayer. It's an ugly prayer. But God still loves your ugly prayers. He does. And then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant you your prayer, which you have asked of him. And she said, Let your maidservant find favor in your sight. So the woman went away and ate, and her face was no longer sad. I think the, the, for me that's one of the powerful parts of this is there was an ugly prayer, but then after she got it out, she cleaned herself up, she ate some food. She hadn't been eating. She hadn't been eating. Like kind of starving herself because right. she was so mad. Now, my question is, though, at this moment, she she doesn't, there's not a fact that she has her miracle. That's a really good point. Like there's no, nothing like, changed. Nothing changed. Not outwardly. And this is what I have found from my life. There's been times when things have hit, like, boom, a problem was like so big. And I prayed, though nothing changed, I changed. Like I went, you know what I'm saying? Like you, yeah. you, you, uh, you got out of your bitterness. You got out of your helplessness. You got out of your whatever, your weak moment. You you prayed and it changed you. So it's, it, it looks like she has to change first so that God can move on her life. She has to get out of her victim mentality right. and get back into faith. And so her messed up, ugly prayer stimulated faith in her. Now she eats food. She's, she's like, it's done. Yeah, son, we're gonna she's acting like it's finished. She's acting like she but already she's not got pregnant. It. It, but which is an act of faith. And we know that faith moves mi miracles into our lives. And David did the same thing. I mean, he lost everything, built himself up, which I believe that a big part of that was praying to God. Yeah, getting strong in the he Lord. He got strong in the Lord. And also, he's like, all right, guys, I got a plan. Exactly. Right? That's how it works. So I think that sometimes we can get so down that we forget about the most powerful aspect that we have in our life. And what does she do after she cleans herself up? She starts eating again. She's she's acting as though the miracle's already happened, even though it hasn't. Right. She then the miracle comes. She has the baby. She ends up having more kids after that. It's a, it's an amazing thing that happens in Hannah's life. Right. And she wasn't moved because her prayer was so pretty. She was she didn't get her miracle because she did everything just right, but she got her miracle because she prayed. I think God loves ugly prayers. I think He loves ugly prayers. I, mean, I do. I have kids coming to ask me for things here and there. Right, right when my kids come to ask me, but the other day Olive came in, and she's like, I want some candy. <laughs> I'm getting it for her though. I will though. Yes, Olive, honey, I got your candy. I get it. Like your life is broken right now. <laughs> like you've you've gone a period of time without any sugar hitting your bloodstream, and this is hard on you. <laughs> she's having a withdrawal. She's having a moment. <laughs> and I love the ugly prayer. In a sense, the ugly ask. In a sense. Yeah. And so we encourage you to just whatever it is, this ugly, pretty, pray. Something that really helped me. Um, I was, uh, I think I was in my 20s. Because, you know, prayer, it was, I heard a teaching. Can't remember who it was. Um, was just, based, I think it was Casey Tree. Just talked about um, praying is just a relationship with God. It's just like talking. It's like, hey, God, yeah, this is going on in my life. Hey, you know, thank you. You know, and Jesus kind of bears out one of the things, you know, the kind of the, the outline, but he says in this manner. And I like to start my prayer with some thanksgiving or some praise, even when things aren't going great. I think that, you know, uh, Philippians kind of bears that out. And when you go to God with thanksgiving in your heart, right? right the thank peace. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, thank that you, I'm Lord, alive. That you, thank you, Lord. That you've given me a great day today. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God, that you're in this. Thank you, God, that I know that you're working on my behalf. Maybe you're tired of being alone. Thank you, Lord, that you're bringing me a great friendship. Thank you, Lord, that you're bringing me the right spouse. You're already, you're pre-thank. Yeah. It's a pre-thank. And so you kind of enter into with some thankfulness and with some praise. I, I think that I enter into his courts with thanksgiving. Just to, to kind of, oh, we got to close with this, but... Yeah. but you said praying is just talking to God. And, and I, I looked up the very first time the word prayer is used in the Bible. I love this. I didn't know. I've never It's not used this. until Abraham prays for the king to, to be healed. So so that's a different story. I don't need to go into the story, but it's it's pretty, it's it's in Genesis chapter 16, 17, 18. Maybe, that's the maybe first. Somewhere in there. Abraham has been talking to God. Right. But hasn't used the word prayer. This is the first time. This is the first time. And so wow. I agree with you. It's just talking to God. It's right. it, Abraham's made requests to God, but the word prayer wasn't used. Right. I like the word prayer, because but it does mean just talking to God, telling him what your needs are, ex expressing yourself. I think all those things are important, having that relationship with God. You know, but it, it, this has been a question for thousands of years. I mean, the disciples, one of the top questions was, how do we pray? That's true. Now, you think about it, of all the questions you have, you have Jesus Christ there. And they're like, hey, 
real quick, like this is this is our because well, they've been praying their whole lives and not seen a lot. Right. This guy hits the scene and man, he, and things are changing. He prays something and it's just boom, like stuff's just happening. And so they're like, hey. You know, just wondering, how, how should we pray? Yeah, how then do we pray? How then do we pray? So anyway, we encourage you to partner with us. Uh, we're on Pray.com starting in August. Uh, 100 people giving $34 a month, which is, you know, just a little bit over $8 a week. Whatever you can do, God puts in your heart. That allows us to further this gospel in a, a huge manner that when you partner up with us. Mm. You want to pray over the day? Father God, I thank you, Lord, for everybody that's listening to this today. And Lord, we pray together. Yes. We're all praying together oh, now Lord. as a group, Father God, for your blessing, your hand upon us, that we're healthy, we're, we're, your promises are making their way into our lives. And Lord, that we are chasing the dreams, the big things that you placed in front of us, that you are the giver of the desires of our heart. Father God, help us pray more. Help us pray prayers of faith. Change us on the inside as we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Birthday Thursday, Harmony. What an incredible name. May 25th, same day. day as my daughter, Savannah Anderson, on May 25th. John Reagan from uh, 56 years old on May 1st. Oh, wow. Thomas B. May 13th. Liz on May 18th. Happy birthday, Liz. And William Dykus on May 20th. Happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. We had a survey. Are you stressed out? Is it? We wanted to see if wake up people. Yeah. Where, are you dealing with stress? Are you dealing with stress? We found that a third of you are saying highly stressed and thirty another third somewhat stressed. And then a third, a little so over third. So that's really two thirds that are dealing with stress. And then one third, one third that says, no, not really stressed. Yeah. Not really stressed at all. We, this is the one There's that a lot of stuff me. to stress about, though. Does watching wake up help your stress level? 86% says... Uh, yes. yes. Wow. That's, that's, a, that's a W. <laughs> but there's nothing. 9% that said no. <laughs> like, uh, watch this guy stresses me out. <laughs> you know that's a fact. <laughs> 10 minutes to Scott. That's enough. Scotty. Yeah, Scotty, Scotty one T. I can't, I can't do Scotty one T for this. 5% sometimes. Hey, you guys can help out Once a little while, bit. Around. But sometimes just, Scott gets right. into his preparation. Preparation age is not helping me. It just stresses people out. <laughs> just, can you please just, God bless you. Hey. 86% said yes, so that's a that's a high B. That's a win that you watch some wake up. Not a C. Right. And uh, yeah, it's a high B. We did well. We're winning. We uh, can do better, though. So this week's uh, survey, and uh, it just happened to me again. I, I, I It drives me nuts, but I just want to know. Is I'm trying to park you, somebody's going to park, and they do, you're like, where are you going? And then they back into the spot. Okay. You're an anti-backer enter. Why? Well, it took just as much effort. It took more effort to back it. More accidents are caused by backing up than but, any other things. But it's like half the cars do it, especially trucks. It's like a 98% of all trucks back in. And I want to know. I think they're trying to get a fast getaway. And we should find out also where you live. Because I remember you and I were in Ohio. Where were we at? It was Ohio. Came out it was and Ohio. every car in the parking lot had backed in. Yeah. It's because it, the when snow. there's ice and snow on the, on, yeah. and it's I get, easier to get out of the parking lot if, if if you're backed in, I guess. Yeah. The only time I back in is if we're at a concert. I know I want to get out because nothing, nothing's worse than trying to back up and go. Now, sometimes I back in because it's easier for the car. Like, I have this SUV, and it doesn't have a really good turning base. And so, like, trying to get into that spot on that the first try is kind of tough. But if you just kind of this way and then back in, it's a little easier. And you got the backup camera now. Hey, but uh, I'm not a backer in her. I don't want you no, to think yeah, that about yeah, me. No, yeah, I was really struggling right no, there. No, no, it's But what very I've learned with the, with the Jeep, because he's he's tough, is I, I know now, because to pull in my garage, I have to go boop. So I have to almost hit the garage, then I back, and then I go straight in. So yeah, I do so the same you, thing in the park. a three-point turn. Yeah. If you backed in, it would just be one boop. No, because you still have to go here, and then... Well, it, but it's only one boop. Oh, there's only one boop. Yeah. It's half the boops. Yeah. That's strong. I would never back into my garage. That scares me. You got a backup camera. Yeah, but the sides and everything else, I, I no, I, 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 I would, my Peloton would be no more. It'd be under the Jeep. Watch this clip. What happens is he's on the cross and he sees his mo mother Mary, and he says this. He, t he takes a pause in what he's doing, and he says this. He says, mother, this is your son, and son, this is your mom. And what he's doing is he's passing the responsibility of his mom, of caring for his mom, onto one of his disciples, one of his friends. And, and what that can tell us is that while, while Jesus is up there making sure and caring for her eternity, that he also is caring for her today. That he also is worried and, and cared, caring for what she's going to eat tonight, what she's go, where she's going to sleep tonight, who she's going to be with, what house is she staying in. He cares about those things. 
And so here's the fact that God cares about your today. He cares about your drive. He cares about your four kids waking up late. He cares about you getting here late because everybody's whining on Mother's Day. Are you kidding me? He's, he, cares about, he cares about what you're going to do after church. He cares about your today. And he cares. Somebody say, he cares about my prayers. Don't forget to be in church. Like, share, and subscribe. Wherever church your church this is. Weekend. Yep. And we encourage you, get involved in your church. Make your church better. Yes. It, I believe it, it helps root you down. Anyway, be blessed. See you tomorrow.